Welcome to the Public Theater and Woolly Mammoth Theater Company's production of Shipwreck. I'm Ivani Debery with the program notes. Shipwreck is subtitled A History Play About 2017. It's now October 2020, only weeks from the election. Outrage over the murders of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and others has fueled a vibrant civil rights movement. The world is bracing itself against a pandemic which has claimed more than 1 million lives and infected more than 34 million people. The particular disorientation of Trump's first year in office seems like the memory of another lifetime. How have we changed? What have we learned about ourselves and our republic? I think it's incredibly hard to write about a time that is happening that you're in, because it's really difficult to have the distance from that time to be able to really see it in its nuance and complexity. Maria Manuela Goyanes is the artistic director of Washington, D.C.'s Woolly Mammoth Theater Company. The play had its U.S. premiere at Woolly back in February, just before the COVID-19 pandemic forced theaters around the country to shut their doors. For me, I tend to shy away from work that is, you know, I remember this with 9-11, all of the 9-11 plays that happened right after 9-11 and how I felt too raw. There was something so raw and difficult about sort of stepping back into that time. However, what I felt about Shipwreck and what really drew me to it was this idea of it being a history play about 2017. And so I thought it was really interesting that Anne had given herself the task of really attempting to understand everything that she was feeling in relationship to everything that was happening around us. I think the thing that I find really fascinating, or maybe the theme I find really moving and recurrent through her work, is her interest in communities and in a sort of post, dare I say, post-patriarchal kind of, maybe even post-capitalist way, kind of how societies set themselves up in small communities. And it feels like her interest in friendship and what friendship is, but also how friendship becomes a socio-political form. You know, I think she's sort of very democratic in her dramaturgy in that way. That was Rupert Gould, who directed the world premiere Shipwreck at London's Almeida Theatre in 2019. Oscar Eustace, artistic director of the Public Theatre, says he feels implicated by the play. I had the weird feeling of her simultaneously inhabiting an experience that I have. These are characters who felt very much like people I know, and yet also sort of casting a really bright, cold, illuminating, and somewhat embarrassing light on those characters at the same time. And I loved that combination. It upset me when I read it. Sahim Ali directed both the physical production at Woolly Mammoth and the audio production, which you are about to hear. On his first read, he was struck not only by the play's profound political resonance, but also with the aesthetic pleasures and formal surprises of Washburn's writing. I was just completely blown away by a really complex, complicated, hyper-theatrical, hyper-political, hyper-muscular world that followed a logic that wasn't quite discernible. It had its own kind of logic, its own kind of rhythm, its own kind of roadmap. It felt really subjective. In drama, she understands time like few other people. The way that she understands how to dislocate us as an audience from the present moment that we're in and play with other moments of time, with the future, with the past. She makes time really unstable in the way that she writes her scenes. And what it does is it gives you a kind of a hyper awareness of the present moment as an audience member that you are in. So I think she does something, she kind of orchestrates time in her work in a way that nobody else does. That was Jeannie O'Hare, the public's former director of New Work Development. The observation Jeannie just made about time, you'll hear that as you listen to Shipwreck. Much of the play unfolds over the course of a single evening, but notably not in real time. Washburn keeps jumping us forward, almost like a record skip, dropping the needle down a little later in the night each time. 
She also begins to take us away from the farmhouse to other times and places, even other planes of reality. You'll hear from a farmer, Lawrence, whose connection to the liberals is not immediately clear. As the play unfolds, its relationship to realism becomes untethered, shifting us into fantastical terrain. I think it's really interesting that the visual imagination will be enhanced and translated through an oral imagination when it's on the podcast. There are lots of unexpected moments, and I do think that she, the, it's so visual. There are different locations in time, in space, in imagination, in mythology, in biblical references. You go on a journey where almost your entire imagination is brought into play because of the way that she uses the visual vocabulary of her locations. So it's a very, very vivid, it's a very sensually stimulating experience, this play. Well, you know, my hope is that the arguments, the language is so beautiful, and the arguments are so smart, and we just lean into these characters and want to get to know them, and that there's an intimacy about the audio, about the radio drama, because it's almost as if you're eavesdropping on this dinner party, because it's all really a dinner party in a deserted cabin in the woods during a snowstorm. It's a horror story that deconstructs itself politically, but it's still a horror story. And you find out as these guys sit there slowly, they don't have any food, and then they don't have any heat, then the lights go out, and they're just, all of their comforts are being taken away from them. And they're left huddled in a circle trying to decide what to do. And I hope that the audio will allow that to feel more and transgressive or intimate to the people listening to it, and certainly more lonely. The play has been divided into three episodes. In a supplemental water cooler segment, you'll hear from its author, Anne Washburn, in conversation with philosopher Kwame Anthony Appiah, playwright Will Arbery, and linguist John McWhorter. We'll also hear from some of the artists and producers involved in Shipwreck's journey from page to stage to audio play. I'll see you on the other side.